All right, so in case you guys haven't heard, uh, while JP is getting the 8th anniversary Dual Dokkan Fest with LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, as well as the LR GT Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Global is going to be getting the Fizz Kid Goku Dokkan Festival banner. And uh, of course, you know, for some people, this could be extremely hype you could be a huge kid goku fan which is awesome but if we're being honest um as a whole for the global community i don't think this is the most hype banner the most hype you know release we could have had but nonetheless nonetheless in this video we are going to be going through uh his banner details as well as his animations and uh, the unit details as well to give you guys an idea of what to expect from this release and also help you decide whether you want to spend your hard-earned dragon stones to try and pull him when the banner comes out in a couple days from now. Now, uh, just to be clear, he's a very good unit. Okay, this guy is really, really powerful. It's just uh, for me personally, at least, I don't think Kid Goku is the most hype. Not that I don't like Dragon Ball, I love Dragon Ball, in fact. It's just, um, I don't know, like it just doesn't really do it for me for some reason. Anyways, uh, before we get into the banner details, let's quickly watch his animations. So here we go, we're on the official JP Dokkan Twitter page because they haven't posted the animations on the global one yet. And I'm gonna full screen this, let me just pop in some earbuds here oh and also uh turn off the music in the background there we go and okay enjoy guys Okay, so I will admit, I will admit, even though the unit is like, you know, not super hype for me, um, I do really like the animations. I do really, really like his animations. Uh, the 12 key, or rather the, um, sorry, the partner super attacks or unit super attacks are very wholesome. Um, you know, it just brings back a lot of memories from a childhood, so that's great. And then the active skill with the Kamehameha with the scream I mean it does get me kind of hyped it does get me kind of hyped so I, I like the active skill a lot the KO screen is amazing too and the animations are are solid you know not like the best animations by far we've seen um, or you know far from the best animations we've seen I mean but uh, very good nonetheless right so those are the animations for the Kid Goku as well as the 
um, Hachan side unit too, which we'll uh, touch on as well later on. So from there, let's pop over. You know what? Let me just quickly play the active skill one more time just to uh, keep it fresh in your memories as we go through this banner, which is not not the best. <laughs> it's not the greatest. We'll get to it though. We'll get to it. Okay, so there is the active skill. Really, really awesome. Really awesome. KO screen as well. And now, let's talk about this banner. So assuming that the banner stays exactly the same as what JP got a couple of months ago, uh, I think actually it was in October of last year, so it's been a solid almost five months, I guess. Um, it's, yeah, not too exciting. It's not too exciting, let's be honest. The most recent Dokkan FS unit on this banner, outside of the Kid Goku, of course, is Raditz. And as you guys know, Raditz is kind of trash. <laughs> He's kind of trash. Now, unless I'm forgetting about a recent banner, I think this would be the first time that Raditz returns to global. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember another banner recently that featured Raditz. The point is, um, he's supposed to be like the centerpiece or the highlight of the, you know, um, remaining units on the pool, right? Like in the pool. He's supposed to be like the exciting non-new unit and he's not very exciting. So that's a bad start for the banner. And then we have a bunch of other Dokkan Fest units that are just like very old, right? I mean, not to say they're not good. Um, I think that AGL Turles is very good with his Extreme Z Awakening. Uh, Beerus definitely needs an Extreme Z Awakening. Uh, Bedell is, you know, niche, but she always was, right? She always was kind of like um, great on her team, not that great on maybe some other teams, but like in the right setup, she is still really, really strong. So nothing bad to say about Bedell, but at this point, I think the shine on her is kind of like worn off as well. And then, uh, yeah, we got Bojack, who is okay. He's okay. Um, could use an Extreme Z Awakening at this point as well. So, uh, yeah, this banner is just not not that good. Um, I would give it like a 6, 6.5 out of 10, if I'm being generous. But uh, I think 6 out of 10 is, is pretty fair. So, yeah, there's not a ton of value on this banner, um, I gotta be honest. So there's the overview of the banner, otherwise, of course, standard rates. Uh, wait, is it always seven featured SSRs? I thought it was eight. No, I guess seven is standard. It's been a while since I've made one of these <laughs> SR poll videos, so I apologize if I'm a bit rusty, but um, yeah, seven featured SSRs, just the... Uh, not too much to get to get excited about here. Um, next up, we have the Kid Goku himself. So let's talk about him. Um, starting with the leader skill, DB Saga, Youth or Exploding Rage, Category Key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 170 percent plus an additional HP attack and defense plus 30 percent for characters who also belong to the Dragon Ball Seekers or Bond of Friendship category. So. At first glance, you're like, yo, three categories. He's leading three categories. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of categories. But you got to keep in mind that these three categories, for the most part, are kind of niche. They're not the you know biggest categories out there. Um, you know, with a lot of units. I think the biggest category between the three is. I'm not sure actually. Would it be exploding rage or youth? I don't know. The point is, they're they're kind of niche categories, so that's why it kind of makes sense that he's leading three, um, and it's kind of similar to like a unit that has two leader skills, right? Like leading two categories, but they're like mid-sized categories or even big categories, right? So, um, still, nonetheless, three categories is good for the leader skill, but they're just kind of niche. And uh, yeah, 30% for additional 30% for Dragon Ball Seekers or Bond of Friendship. So that's 200% for characters that belong to 
these categories and also one of these categories, right? Uh, he has three super attacks, as you saw in the video. Uh, there's the regular super attack, which greatly raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage. And then there's the first unit super attack with, uh, you know, the whole gang. Uh, and it can be activated when there is an ally whose name includes Yamcha, Master Roshi, Oolong, Bulma Youth, or Bunny Bulma attacking in the same turn. And this one massively raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage and lowers attack. And then the other unit super attack is Friendship Attack, which is when you have Hachan or Aider uh, attacking in the same turn. Now, uh, it does not include the Berserk Hachan, unfortunately. And it massively raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage, and lowers attack. So same effect, basically, uh, for both of the unit super attacks, as far as I can tell. Yeah, exact same effect. So uh, those are the super attacks. Now getting to his passive, Attack and defense plus 159% to start, plus an additional attack and defense plus 59% when performing a super attack. DB Saga or Youth category allies key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 50%. That is a huge, huge bu uh, buff, a huge boost um, to DB Saga or Youth category allies. So on those teams, he is going to be an amazing support unit. Randomly changes one key sphere of a certain type to rainbow key spheres, plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained, plus an additional uh, critical hit chance plus 7%, and reduces damage received by 7% per rainbow key sphere obtained. So essentially, um, yeah, he's a nuker, attack and defense plus 20% for every key sphere obtained because he's a rainbow orb changer. We're gonna be able to get a lot more key spheres um, on a regular basis, and then on top of that, he's getting the 7% chance to crit and 7% damage reduction for every Rainbow Key Sphere. And on average, you're probably going to be getting like two Rainbow Key Spheres, so that's like 14%. But on some some turns, you might get up to three, four, or five, right? So the max uh, Rainbow Key Spheres you can get in a turn, if you didn't know, is five. So in theory, on a really good turn, he could get. 35% uh, additional damage reduction and 35% crit chance from the Rainbow Key Spheres, which would be very, very good, right? Plus an additional defense plus 59% with three or more Key Spheres obtained, Key Spheres obtained, and then launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack with five or more Key Spheres obtained. And once again, uh, you're gonna be able to get, I think, five Key Spheres pretty often, like on maybe 90% of the turns, you'll be able to get five key spheres because he's a rainbow orb changer. So that just makes it much easier to connect key spheres, right? And uh, last but not least, all allies chance of performing a critical hit plus 8% and damage reduction reduced by 8% with seven or more key spheres obtained. So on top of the potential 35% damage reduction here, he can get 8% more for a grand total of possibly 43% damage reduction but on average, it's probably going to be more like 20% or 25% or so, right? Which is still solid. It's still solid. Um, so yeah, that's the passive. Uh, you got the, you know, uh, potential additional uh, super here. You got, of course, a potential third super from the hidden potential. You got, uh, you know, damage reduction, critical hit chance, the nuking for the attack and defense with uh, orb key or uh, key spheres obtained. Um, this unit just does a little bit of everything, and it's just really, really good. Um, the support is amazing, like I said, on DB Saga or Youth. Um, is it a good slot 1 unit? I think you could maybe get away with putting, putting them in slot 1, but this is definitely a unit that's better suited in slot 2 or slot 3. But as a whole, um, very powerful unit, you know? A lot of damage, uh, very good defense in slot 2 or slot 3, once again with the damage reduction, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, of course, he also has an active skill, Angry Kamehameha, which raises attack by 800%, temporarily causes damage to enemy, and within the turn activated, uh, attacks have a 59% chance of becoming a critical hit. Uh, so yeah, that is the active skill. I think damage-wise, it should be hitting pretty damn hard because of this 
attack plus 800% and of course the 59% chance to crit. And then you uh, can activate it after the character receives an attack 8 or more times in battle, which seems like a lot, but you can also activate it when HP is 59% or less once only. So let's say you take a super, then the next time he comes around, you will be able to launch this active skill if you are below 59%. So it's not too bad condition-wise. Uh, links are the Innocents, All in the Family, Infighter, Kamehameha, uh, The Incredible Adventure, Guides to Dragon Balls, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Low Class Warrior, Pure Saiyans, Dragon Ball Seekers, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, Youth, DB Saga, Kamehameha, Exploding Rage, Bond of Friendship, Bond of Parent and Child, and Warriors Raised on Earth. Obviously, a lot of categories there for the Kid Goku. So that is the Fizz Kid Goku, guys. Um, I basically said all there is to say about him. I think he is a very good Dokkan Fist unit. Uh, I think he does a little bit of everything. He does everything really well. So nothing really to complain about aside from just the unit, the character not being like super hype for me personally. Now moving on to the Aider, the Hachan. Leader skill is DB Saga, category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 130%, super attack greatly raises attack for one turn and causes supreme damage and passive. This guy is basically a defensive god. I'm telling you right now, he is really busted defensively, uh, in my opinion. Attack and defense plus 80%, reduces damage received by 20%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 80%, and reduces damage received by 30% when there's an ally whose name includes Goku Youth attacking in the same turn. And then key plus 8 and plus an additional attack and defense plus 80% for 5 turns after receiving an attack. And then starting from the 5th turn, reduce damage received by 30% and recovers 80% HP once only when HP is 20% or less. So obviously, this part's gonna be kind of difficult to get without dying, right? Because you're coming very close to dying when you're at 20% or less HP. But in theory, this guy can get up to 80% damage reduction and also basically fully heal, uh, heal you once, right? So um, defensively, uh, as far as like, you know, just being a good utility unit, uh, he is amazing. And of course, he's a good pair for the youth Goku in uh, getting his like, uh, unit super attack off and stuff like that, right? So, uh, yeah, this guy, if you get the Kid Goku, you really want this guy because he's going to help you a lot in, you know, the harder events in the game, like uh, Cell Max, for example, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, defensively, just really, really impressive. I don't think he's going to be putting up good or great numbers offensively, right? He's probably not going to be hitting that hard, but the defense, I think, more than makes up for it. So, uh, that's the Aider, Lynx, our gentleman, Android Assault, Infighter, Tough as Nails, Guide is the Dragon Balls, Incredible Adventure, and Fierce Battle, and categories are DB Saga, Androids, Movie Heroes, Artificial Life Forms, and Bond of Friendship. So, yeah, we got Aider, and we got Youth Goku, and there is the breakdown, guys. That is everything you need to know about this Kid Goku release. Now, uh, hopefully at this point, you guys have enough information to make a decision for yourselves about whether you want to summon for him. But if you want my opinion, I think that this is a banner that you could definitely get away with skipping. Um, if you wanted to skip it, if you wanted to pass it, it's not a bad idea because uh, the value on the banner is pretty low. Uh, the unit is good, is, is really good. But, you know, he's not like the most busted unit, like, we definitely have um, some better stuff around the corner. Uh, not to say the anniversary is anytime soon, because the anniversary is uh, still six months away on Global, so it might be too early to start saving for that, although it is something you should keep in the back of your mind if you want to. Um, but I think my recommendation is mainly on the fact that the banner is just not great. Yeah, the banner just is really disappointing, unless they make it better. Unless they, like, I don't know, throw the gambas on there or something like that. Which is possible, I guess. I doubt it, but let's say they, you know, throw us a curveball and, and put the gambas on there, then it's a different story. Then in that case, yeah, probably summon. But for, for now, based on the information we have right now, it's a skip for me. Um, if you want to summon, or if there's discounts, they might do like a 3 plus 1 discount or 
sorry, not three plus one, but like a multi-step discount where you get a guaranteed feature unit for the last step. Um, that's worth considering. So at most, I think for the average player, I would put like a hundred stones into this banner, maybe 150, like three multis, call it a day. That's kind of how I feel about it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys plan to do when the banner drops. And uh, if you are gonna summon, then how many stones do you plan to drop for the Kid Goku? That's all I gotta say for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.